You're listening to Standing Before the Mass podcast with Chris Eaton, sponsored by Newport Nautical Supply. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast. In this episode, I sit down with Newport International Boat Show Director Lisa Knowles and Marketing Director Jocelyn Emery. The show, the 51st, will take place September 15th through the 18th, 2022, located at the Newport Yachting Center Marina in downtown Newport, Rhode Island. Among this year's expanded offerings, Lisa and Jocelyn tell us about several new events, educational opportunities, and giveaways. The Newport for New Products Awards program is, of course, back and will be showcasing new boats and boating products making their U.S. debut. There's a People's Choice Award for Best Overall Boat Debut, which is chosen by attendees prior to the show via online voting. The winners of that will be announced on Friday, September 17th of the show. There are on-the-water training sessions for both power boaters and sailors, as well as women-only dedicated courses. New to the show this year, the vessel CAT, that's spelled K-A-T, will be appearing with the organization Voice of the Oceans, who are committed to ridding the oceans of plastic pollution. You may also visit the sailing vessel Maiden at the show. Some of my more astute listeners may recall us covering this with guest Erica Lush when we talked about her involvement with the program. The Maiden program inspires women and girls all over the world. It raises funds for girls' educational programs around the world and shows, by example, what girls can achieve if they embrace STEM subjects in school. Also getting a lot of attention will be a dedicated booth featuring 12 popular YouTube influencers, hosts, and personalities. Just a few of the popular names mentioned were Acorn to Arabella, Captain Q Yacht Hunter, and Louis Sauzet from Tips from a Shipwright. Running concurrently with the show, the 12-meter yacht club with the North American fleet of 12-meter yachts and the Ida Lewis Yacht Club will be hosting the 12-meter championships September 16 through 18. The final day will feature the fleet parading through Newport Harbor at about 10 a.m., and the Yachting Center is welcoming all attendees to the Marina Docks to view the event. In short, they've packed a lot into this show beyond the already robust list of boat builders, product manufacturers, and services on display. And with a bit of planning, you can really get a lot out of this show. We also discussed the best way to get your tickets in advance on their website, and the best way to get to the show and where to park. There's a bit of inside baseball in here as we also discuss all the work that goes in behind the scenes. We cover all of this and much more. And I thank Lisa and Jocelyn for being so generous with their time so close to the start of the show. I hope you enjoy. I'm sitting here with Lisa Knowles and Jocelyn Emery. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Of the Newport International Boat Show. What are your roles? Well, (laughs) I'll start. I'm now show director. But this is my 27th year, and I've had a, had a number of different roles over that time, but for the most part, head of sales. Um, I'm the marketing director, working alongside Lisa and the team. I've been in this department for about five years. How old is the show? This is the 51st year. And who started it? <laughs> so back in 1970, <laughs> Paul Dodson started it. And Paul was a discharged naval officer at the time, and he had seen the success of another show on the East Coast and thought that the Northeast needed its own own show. And it, so it started out as a sailboat show. Weren't as many power boats back in 1970, believe it or not. It, was it always at the Yachting Center or what we know as the Newport Yachting Center? No, it actually started over at Fort Adams. And it kind of made its rounds around the harbor, you know, as it ran out of it it grew and it needed to move on. There wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of dock infrastructure in the harbor at the time. So anyways, I'm not really sure how it ended up at the Yachting Center, but the Yachting Center has been its home for, oh, gosh, I don't I don't know, quite some time. And then, you know, the Newport Harbor Corporation, who owned the property acquired the show. Right. And at, at one point you had a sailboat show and a powerboat show separate. They're almost like back to back. And then it made sense to merge them at one point, I imagine. Yeah. You know, I think 
for Newport, that has certainly has certainly been a winning combination for us to have have both power and sale at the same time. And I have a feeling that, you know, what tends to happen is the manufacturers decide that they're going to move into building a power boat. Maybe what they saw was that power boating was gaining in popularity. And so they decided they wanted to maximize their, maximize their sales. And so it's kind of funny. We're seeing that trend, you know, where there's an increase in power boats and it's just kept going and going and going. What are you, what are your backgrounds? Do you have a, a strong boating background or marketing or no? <laughs> I'm getting a no from Jocelyn. Um, well, I'm married to a boat builder, so that helps. Oh, what um, company? He used to work for Concordia um, many years and now he's, you know, turned history teacher, but he, his whole family is lifelong sailors. So kind of through him, I would call myself a deckhand. Um, but that's about it between uh-huh. that and packing a really nice lunch. But I'm always game to be on the water. But Lisa, is definitely the sailor of the new culture. Well, I I grew up boating. In fact, when I was much younger, I didn't have any interest in boating at all. But because we lived on the water, it was important to my parents that we learn how to handle ourselves on the water. And then, you know, really, I guess I really gravitated towards cruising. I love that. But I have done very little sailing in the past 27 years <laughs> since I've taken this job. So kind of funny how that happened. I found that I thought when we started our company in 1992, it'll be 30 years in September. Wow. I thought, oh, this would be great. I'm involved with something I enjoy. And I find every year it's like, how many times did you go sailing? You, might, you know, I yeah. move the boat to the mooring and I bring it back to the it's the different when it's suddenly your job, isn't it? It yes. takes it takes kind of that I ruined a perfectly good hobby. I know you per- ruined a perfectly good hobby. But you know the whole department really like between stand up paddle boards, kayaking, canoes, inflatables. Like we're still all actively on the water and mm-hmm. enjoying ocean life. But there really is hard to find that time for the big day sales or overnights or anything like that. Our summer's kind of busy. Yeah. <laughs> so suddenly it disappears. I'm like, I missed another one. I was going to ask you about that. I, I heard somebody half joke, but it's probably true at the folk and jazz festivals. You know, when, when do you start planning for next year? And it's like when the oh, yeah. gates close, right? you, you know, and is, yeah. do you find that? Is it a nice pace throughout the season or is it obviously you're amped up now because we're close or, do, or is it? Is it full on pretty much all year? Well, it depends. It has its it has its ups and downs. You know, it's sort of peaks and valleys. Um, when the when all the paperwork goes out early, you know, early in the year. But it it is a bit like herding cats. So <laughs> right, people always say, "Gosh, is this a full time job?" I'm like, yeah, it's like herding cats. So, and then of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have a the fall for us is more. Um, with results and reconciliation and improvements and surveys and really just kind of setting the stage for the following year. So we go into heavy strategy, heavy review of consumer data and things like that. So we set the bar really high for ourselves. So our fall just goes quickly into planning and strategy. And then January 1, the contracts go out and this whole cycle starts again. So we wish we had more planning time, to be honest. We yeah. We do more execution than than planning. It all comes together. I think the I think the cleanup is worse than the lead up. <laughs> Are you functioning independent or is Newport Harbor Corp still own you? Yeah, Newport Restaurant Group. Right. Uh does so in the show. And yes, we're, you know, we're somewhat autonomous to a certain certain extent, you know, where most of our other businesses are restaurants. So we are a little, we are a little. We're an outlier a bit for the for the company. How difficult was it to adjust to the layout when they built that hotel? Um, that was a huge chunk of land that went out of your purview. Yeah, we're still transitioning a bit with that. And as as they are, too, we're both both feeling out how it all how it all works. And we've had some we've had a little we had a little warning, of course. And so we tried to at least give the exhibitors a heads up. I think it's, it's rougher on them when all of a sudden they show up and you can communicate as best you can. But then when they show up and they see it in person, it, it can be daunting and there's a lot of anxiety around it. Yeah. 
one of the things that I thought of, you mentioned when exhibitors show up is the choreography that must take place to get the boats in, in particular. I mean, booths are one thing, but the boats, they go in and then you've got docks that then close in behind them. And I imagine, but you have an, uh, an arrival schedule. How does that work and how do you coordinate that? Well, the marina, I mean, thankfully, we have a great seasoned marina team for one and they coordinate it. And yeah, everybody's given specific timing and it doesn't always go according to plan. And thank God, you know, exhibitors are, you can be flexible and understanding when things don't exactly go according to plan. But yeah, thanks to a great team and a lot of exhibitors who have done this year after year, it, it can go very smoothly. There was no show in 2020 due to COVID. Is that correct? And then were there adjustments in 2021 or was it, were you pretty much back on normal at that point? Well, 2021, the hotel had been finished. And so then we, it was our first official show with the hotel and hotel and COVID hotel and COVID. Yay. But you know, thank goodness. Everybody was just so thrilled to be at the show. Exhibitors, attendees, you know, was really the only thing happening. And it was a struggle for our in water exhibitors to have product to show, but it almost didn't matter. Everybody was so pleased to finally be out and about. And yeah, we kind of, we, we kind of sailed through the hotel layout. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think in 2020, the, the backdrop was beautiful with the hotel versus the construction year. And then really, like Lisa said, the attendance was 10% up um, from the year prior. People were just so thrilled to be outdoors and have an event to go to. And I hope we see those kind of numbers this year um, again, but people were just so excited to do something and be in the air. Even if we were running on a lean, lean, mean staff, the show was, was nothing but excitement. You, so you have numbers obviously every year on attendance. Is there a limit or a cap on attendance um, per day or anything like that? No, no, no we'll you never don't close the gates. Yeah, I you, mean, the you, docks you, might get really full at certain times, but the attendees are always patient. The exhibitors love to see lines. And so it all works out, but there is definitely some, some crowd control that happens, but we would never turn anyone away. Yeah. And the, the show site is 14 acres. So, you know, people can get spread out, but crowded aisles on the docks and in the tents just adds to the buzz. And I think people can really get, everybody gets caught up in that. Right. Yeah. I could always judge by like sort of where the market's going by, which docks were more crowded than others. I watched it almost transition from, especially with my customers, you see, I'm going for the bigger sailboat. And then they did a charter in the Caribbean. So now catamarans are are a big thing. And then, oh, now it's trawlers. And I think I walked the docks briefly uh, last year. And it seemed like center consoles oh were, my all, God. were all the race. That's where the crowds were. I said, okay, so that's the newest I don't know how I don't know how people decide. Uh, you know, if they're in the center console market, oh my gosh, yeah. there's so many boats, right? So many different, different boats. Fun. I noticed on the website, back to ticketing, it said something about that you were really encouraging people to purchase the ticket online. And so when you just show up, you get your, your bracelet and, and you get, so you will have limited what do you call them, box uh, office. Box, oh, thank you. Uh, limited box offices on site. Is that the way the future, like I know the, the folk festival, everything's on the dice app now, or last year it was yes. something else. And, and including within the app, you can then have a map of where to go and, and what, what stages are playing. Yes. Is that something you're moving towards? We are. Um, I think because of COVID we are, I mean, I think the the market is capitalizing on that trend of getting everything in hand and having a seamless experience and just being able to walk through. I think majority restaurants, trade shows, events, concerts, they're all moving towards this because it just makes your experience better and you can just walk through the gates. So we are encouraging that, but we will have freestanding kiosks this year um, at the show to help move the lines as well. That would be considered our box office but we are encouraging as much as possible just because you're not standing in line. So you can just walk on in and start your experience. If somebody buys the ticket through your web portal, 
how does it come? Does it come as an email confirmation they print out or do they, is it a QR code on a phone? Um, or? All of the above. Oh. So you can print it out like a Southwest boarding pass. You can show it on your phone through your email, or you actually can download it to your wallet. So all of it's digital and mm. off you go. Yeah. One of the cool things about, uh, it's not the dice app I misspoke or the dice was for your ticket so that they could cut down on scalpers, but they have their own app. And one of the cool things that my wife and I were caught off guard one year, we see all these people, where are they going? What, what do they know that we don't? They had the app, which we didn't. And I think we had smartphones then. And they would do push notifications appearing now on this stage. So-and-so is a surprise. And it was like, wow, you could do that with the boat. You could say, now a seminar taking place now or yes, whatever, you know, yes. that, that was a cool thing. We would love to get there one day. Speaking of seminars, it's not just walking around, looking at booths, looking at boats. You have, you have educational seminars or informational seminars, and then there's on the, on the water component. Can you talk to that a little bit? Sure. This year we have more experiences happening at the show that I've seen in my tenure here and Lisa can speak to it as well, but We have in-water training programs, which are 90 minutes to 120 minutes being brought to you by Narragansett Sailing School and then Freedom Boat Club. Mm -hmm. Those are in-water. We do recommend signing up in advance um, because they do fill up. We have classroom seminars taking place at the Maritime Center on how to tips to finance your boat. Um, One of them is one of our the big vessels called CAT, which is coming here to kind of promote their mission of ridding the ocean of pollution and plastics. Mm-hmm. They're doing a seminar about their journey and, and their experience on this vessel. We have the Maiden Factor here, um, which is another board, uh, another boat to board, which is empowering you know women and children and education. We have kids activities. We have U.S. sailing coming with their Olympic athletes in the Bolin for their meet and greet and signing. Um, we have a big YouTuber meetup with influencers. So this is the year. I mean, there will be so many boats to see, but also as you're um, planning your day, definitely we would encourage you to go online, you boat show and look at highlights and plan your day around these activities because it's so robust. We've never seen it like this and super exciting. Now, will Maiden Factor be at the show or because I know yes. there's a thing this afternoon, which I'm going to. Yes, uh, yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. At, at the Shibuya. Erica yeah. Lush was one of my previous guests. Oh, oh, um, right. I don't know where she, she might have actually been in Jamestown when I interviewed her. But I know, yeah, that they're back in town. Yeah. And you mentioned the cat. Uh, what, what is that? The ocean plastic. Well, there's um, the Shermans are our Brazilian family, and they've just been voyaging their family for for years, years and years. And they've gone through a, a number of different different sailboats and their sailboat cat, K-A-T, is a technologically advanced sailboat. Um, she was recently built. I think they they, they have composting abilities on board and yeah, some really interesting things, but they've been, I, I just think their voyaging sort of took them to a place, um, noticing the amount of trash in the oceans and on the beaches. And somehow they got together with an organization called Voice of the Oceans and they've teamed up and they're sort of spreading, spreading this word around the globe as they go. And they just happen to be here on the East coast. You also mentioned a YouTube gathering. I, I noticed one year there was um, some famous, I don't follow a lot of people on YouTube, but a sailing group and they were a big attraction. I think the news media might've covered it and said they were here and they, they all flocked to this boat. Is is this a, there more than one? Yes. We have a dozen coming, a dozen dozen influencers coming. (laughs) And they all wound up in Newport in September. We have corralled them and we have really amazing partners with Jamestown Distributors and Total Boat and Edson. And they've helped really kind of launch this program. Um, Some of the other boat shows down south are doing this. And we said, let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. And this is the year. So they have um, a large space on North Commercial inside the show. They will be setting themselves up. All their Patreons are invited. Really just this viral marketing campaign encouraging their followers to come to the show. We hope they'll enjoy the show as well. And then these attendees get to meet some of their favorite celebrities. To name a few, we have Colin from Below Deck. We have Arabella. We have Andy Miller of Boatworks today. Tips from Shipwright, Captain Q. So some really, you know, medium-sized followers that we're really excited to see what it can do and shake things up at the show. 
we'll see how it goes. Years ago, when I first got on the harbor, I would meet people and they ch- sailed around a lot, either around the world or just up and down to the Caribbean. And the way they financed it was like the husband was a diesel mechanic or very handy with that sort of thing. Right. His wife could sew sales. She could do all kinds of other jobs. And that's how, and there were many couples like that. And that's how they paid their way. And I just scratched my head thinking, I wonder what they would think now, because some of them are gone, what they would think now that, hey, how am I going to finance this? I'm going to film it and upload it to the internet and people are going to send me money. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? One of the um, the interviews I did a while ago, with, he was actually a friend of mine from school, Glenn Robbins. He's a retired Navy. And after he got out of the Navy, he tells a story in our podcast. He went to Iris and he learned marine systems. He worked at James. I think he worked at Jamestown Boatyard for a little while and he bought a catamaran and he and his wife went off cruising and he had a funny thing he said in the, in our podcast, which was, because I didn't want to be a guy on my couch watching YouTube videos. No. I want to go out and do it. Oh. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, it, it's really inspirational. I mean, you, you get to know these characters and you're like, I can do this. I want to do this. So it definitely has a vision to get out there. Let's talk about awards and, and recognition for either booths or boats or products. Is it the Boat of the Year program? Did I get that right? Uh, the Newport for New Products. Newport for New Products. So we do okay. a program with our media partners, Bon Air, so Sailing World, Cruising World, and Yachting. Um, they put together this great program. It's been going on for over 20 years. And they do best overall sailboat, best overall power. We also have weather gear. We have a green award, most environmentally friendly. We also have a new award this year called Accessibility how to make your boat or product um, more accessible for um, boaters of all experiences and levels. So that'll be nice to give out that new award this year. But it's really just about cheering on your your fans and, and coworkers and exhibitors. And then what we're trying to do this year is try to get attendees to continue to build on that excitement. Um, so we want to try and have it go both ways, like B2B and B2C. So we're trying to get that, you know, encouraging just getting the word out on this program because it's pretty cool. It's it's the program is never um, boats that have never been in the U S before. So they're debuting at our show. So who, who comprises the panels? Are, are they all, are they journalists? They're judges that are brought on by our, our media partner. Oh, okay. um, there's usually about five of them. Um, they go around the show Wednesday pre-opening and then all day Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like a secret panel. And then they, on Friday morning, they give out the awards at, um, at our bowl in at 830. And then the awards are given out. And then we just pretty much launch it through media with press releases, website, social media, so that now all the attendees know where the awards have been given out. And are the, the booths or the boats identified? Yeah. So they have large decals and burgies um, and banners. So it's a, a, a specific logo that you'll see that has the words NFMP in it. Um, it's red and blue. And so, and it's all marked in our directory and things like that. So we do like to call attention to it. We talked about tickets and stuff like that. Newport is notoriously congested downtown in the summer. It's easy for me. I can ride my bike or walk, but if I'm coming from elsewhere outside of the, the immediate area, what's the best strategy to, to not wind up stuck in traffic? I don't know about not stuck in traffic, <laughs> but I can encourage people to buy parking passes at Easton Beach. Okay online in advance, $40 um, every day. And there's a shuttle eight to eight. Um, there's a shuttle that drops you right off in the show. That's what I would do, mm-hmm. especially if I was bringing family, but then there's also a lot of lots downtown that you can, right. you know, take that gamble. But um, I think getting it in advance would is built. We would encourage. And there's also ferries. You can go Providence ferry, Jamestown ferry, things like that. You mentioned you have media partners. How, what's the selection process or how do, do they come to you or do you go to them? How does that relationship evolve? Yeah. I mean, most of our tried and true media partners, which is AIM and the Bonaire group, they have been with us for a very long time, multiple decades. Mm-hmm. Um, they each bring different assets to the table. Their ma- I mean, their magazines are amazing. There's seven of them among them and that are more. And then they also um, help us with the show directory. So there's a partnership in that as well as editorial, and then obviously the award program. So it really is a two-way relationship with judging content, uh, media placement, and just a true partnership. Now, at the same time, over at the Newport Shipyard, is is it the Newport Charter Yacht Show? Brokerage. Brokerage, excuse yeah. me, brokerage. Is, is that tied in with you guys, or is that just happening and... It happens. Um, we, the show runs, con- the shows run concurrently because it's helpful. There's a lot of people in town. 
obviously for the international show. And, and I think the organizers of the brokerage show have always felt that it was best to tie in. So we do some cross promotion with each other. And I think it's been a nice value added. The, the brokerage show will have water taxis that go back and forth. So it works nicely. They can buy a ticket to the international boat show over there. And yeah, we've had a, we've had a good working relationship for, for a long time. And our attendees can go to the, it's free in general, but if you um, have a wristband, obviously you can go back and forth from our show. One of the things that makes this show unique or at least interesting is it's run by all women and it has been for quite some time, hasn't it? Just changed. Yeah, it did oh, just did. change this year. Oh, it did? There, yeah, we do have, even though our support team for the show is um, predominantly male, but, um, and we couldn't, we couldn't put the show together without, without all of them, you know, right. but uh, we do have, we did hire a male salesperson this year. So I know for the first <laughs> time in a long time. But for many decades, it yeah. was five women. Yeah. And no, Nancy her name, I noticed just looking at your website, her name no longer appears. Did she retire? She retired last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. We have employed her for the, for this, for this year's show. So it'll be, it'll be great for me to have her there for one. It's very comforting to, I, you know, I worked with Nancy. We worked together for over 20 years. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem right to have a boat show without her. <laughs> Did she get some sort of nice send off at least last time or? Yes, she did. And, you know, we, she's been on, she's been consulting with us this year as well. So internally, we never really said goodbye officially corporate wide. There was a goodbye sort of, but anyways, we'll be, we'll be giving her a proper Newport exhibition group send off after the show for years for me anyway that the voice of the newport boat show was always chris parati oh gosh that booming yeah. voice yeah. over the speaker oh my gosh welcome right? especially if your booth was near the speaker right you know but and then he went away at one point yeah you know oh. the the yachting center went through some transitions as well with the events that they ran you know remember they ran all those Oktoberfest, Taste of Rhode Island, the concert series. There were so many things that happened on that site. And we were just, the boat show was just one of them. Of course. So he was not in a part of the show. He was part of the, the he venue. He was part of, he managed the Newport Yachting Center and all the events that, that happened over there. You know, and, and of course the boat show was one of, one of the events, but. Oh yeah, Chris was Chris was the face and the voice of that property for a long time. At one point, did you um also produce the Providence show for a while because I know George built that up over a number of years. And yeah, then- we did. We um we acquired the show from George. He decided he was going to retire and Darn, he planned that just right because boy, things went south very quickly after that. But we owned, we did own and, and um, produce that show for a few years. And then we ultimately sold it to Rhode Island Marine Trades. Having worked that show and, or for a little while, but produced this one for so long, what would you say makes one show a success and another not? Is it climate, market, timing? Yeah, a lot of that has a lot to do with it. And, you know, the Providence show, which happened in January, so different, such a different vibe, a winter show versus a in-water show, right? And especially with the timing, the boats were different. It was great working with a lot of companies that would never do the international boat show because their product wasn't the right fit for the time of year. So it was, it was fun working with a whole other segment, jet skis and all of that, that we, we never work with for the, for the fall show, but yeah, timing the market, the state of the market has a lot to do with the success. And then just downtown Newport. So, you know, our backdrop is phenomenal and the experience and you can really make it a day trip an overnight trip. I mean, that's what makes Newport all the nooks and crannies and the historic element of it all. I mean, that's what it's the soul and we just kind of fall into it beautifully. So I think Newport is just so special for our spot. It's funny. I, I know, of course, I know a lot of the sales reps from 
my end of the business. And whenever I see them, the first time I usually see them other than sporadically throughout the summer is at the Newport Boat Show. And they're all bright eyed, they're juiced up, they're amped up, they're ready to go. And the last time I see them for, for the next gap is at the Kellogg Show, which is in Connecticut week before Thanksgiving. And they're They've got bags under their eyes. Their voices oh are shot. Yeah. It's not the last, but it's sort of, that's the end of the arc of their intense season. Yeah. And they are, they are frazzled yeah. at that point. Yeah. You're yeah. Yeah. Because at that point they've gone to three and getting ready for a fourth show all within that three month span of time. It's, it's a lot. We're always like, phew, you know, when the show ends, but they're just cranking up as yeah. you say. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of end on the choreography. I, I don't know if this is a hundred percent true, but it sounds accurate. Um, I had a friend, Neil Gray, who worked at the yachting center a long, long time ago. And when they did one of the first shows where they do, you do the bump out for the docks, he had to go through all this applications with, oh, right. with the state. And I think after doing it once or twice, he said, we've got to set this up so that next year the application is just a repeat. I believe he told me he set it up so that going forward, it was a more straightforward process with the state or it whoever, is. I guess it's yes. the state. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's a predictable happening and yeah, it just seems to kind of happen. Thanks to him, I guess. Thanks to food love. Oh, yeah. I now know where all the docks live. Yeah. Oh, right? <laughs> I circled around the back of the parking lot and said, that's where all these docks come from. I know. 1037. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's um, yes, it's the magic. It's the magic space for us back there. It's where it all it all lives until it all gets on a truck. We went and there comes when down. they first opened and I said, oh, I'm going to I'm going to take home a small container of the moorings chowder. Oh, right. And I went and it was all gone because it was oh, the big opening day. Yeah. Paul saw me and said hi. And then I said, I'm out, you're out of charity. He goes, hang on. Oh, and he yeah. went in the back and he procured some for me. <laughs> <laughs> to sort of sum up, the best way for anyone to get any information, whether it be dates and times of the show, purchase a ticket is your website. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. And what, what is that website? I, look, I was oh, on it. Just but newportboatshow.com. I, that's it. Mm -hmm. Newportboatshow.com. Is there anything you'd and like to throw sure in there? that it's Newport, Rhode Island, because the Oops. Newport, um, Newport Beach Boat Show in California runs about the same time. And every year it's happened to us already. People bought tickets at our show and then they realized that really they wanted to buy tickets for Newport Beach. Oh, oh yeah. I've had people call me during the show frantic because they can't find the show. They're walking all around town. They can't find the show. And I now I know to ask them the question because I know that there's another show with the same name happening at the same time. And sure enough, he was walking around Newport Beach and oh. there was nothing happening. But Could you describe a landmark for me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, just make sure that it comes up Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. Next time we'll ask, is it brisk air? Yeah. Is it windy? <laughs> Are you still in shorts or long sleeve? Is there anything you'd also like to throw in that I may not have covered that people should? Well, there'll be there'll be more boats here this year than there were last year. So for mm -hmm. people who came to the show last year, I think that they'll be pleasantly surprised to um, to see the number of number of boats. And, Shot you know, puzzle. yeah, it really is. There are some. There's some really exciting boats that are debuting for the first time. There are companies here who have never been to the show before, bringing boats and products international. Yeah. And then the only other call out is we have our, we have a presenting sponsor this year um, for the first time ever, Bank Newport and then Ocean Point Marine Lending. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a little change in our branding and our, our visuals. Um, we've got a, a combined logo and it will be plastered everywhere if you haven't seen it already with our media campaign, but definitely on site. So we give them a big welcome. They're, they're great to incorporate and have been amazing to work with. You triggered one thought that I had had when you said more boats from different countries and international, obviously international. At one point, I remember someone going around conducting a survey. So I imagine you have good data on the draw of your show in terms of uh, states, countries, the backgrounds, that sort of thing. I think was it performance research or somebody did yes. did some information. So you have good 
data on that, right? We do. Um, this year, they're actually the same group. Performance mm-hmm. Research is back at it, and they are doing an economic impact study as well as a demographic study this year. We we thought this year was the appropriate time, um, past COVID, and kind of the show is full and attendance will be you know at capacity. So they are doing another study. How far apart are the studies? How long ago did you do the last one? Yeah. A while ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's time. But the, the economic impact is there and you, you had, you had numbers on that from years ago. So. Yes. Yes. I mean, what we do is we, we pull Newport as a, a region um, and then look at their spending and qualifications and that will come out in the study, but you can only imagine, you know, what that number is, but it's, it's quite robust. And we do offer the state of Rhode Island and trades and, and Newport just an enormous backdrop for staffing and spending and dining and um, any experiences. I mean, a lot of people just go up to the mansions. I mean, it's just, right. it's, it's a full experience here. So. Yeah. I remember when the Volvo came, I know somebody that was involved in a hotel up in Warwick and in Providence mm-hmm. and they were, they didn't understand what was happening no. because they were getting yeah. calls from uh, other countries about booking the whole place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Crazy. Yeah. 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 It was impressive. Well, that's great. Well, I I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank Uh, you. Thank you for listening to Standing Before the Mass podcast with Chris Heaton, sponsored by Newport Nautical Supply. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.